Today we're going to do a really fun project that involves ink blending and creating your own stencil from a die cut. And these are two examples that use the basic technique that I'm going to recreate. But they're very different, I think, in the way that they actually turn out. Um, this one has a lot going on with die cuts that were colored in the process and then some additional bling. This one, believe it or not, and you can't really see it incredibly well, started on a piece of designer series paper. This is from the In Good Taste designer series paper. And maybe if I hold this up a little bit, you might be able to see there's a little texture going on in the bottom. So you can definitely use designer series paper in this as well. And this one is very grungy. Many of you know that I love grunge stamps. I love the whole kind of shabby chic look. It's just a design that makes me, makes me very happy. And this one on the right is, I'll, I'll be honest, this is a little outside my comfort zone. I don't usually like things that are super, super busy like this, but as I was putting it together, it, it kind of got away, but that's okay. So I'm going to jump in because this is one that you just need to see how it's done and play around with it to make it. Now, when I say play around with it, I literally mean play around with it. I have no idea, in all honesty, what either of these is going to look like when I'm done. I'm going to do one on some designer series paper and another one on a piece of whisper white or basic white. And we're gonna see what happens. It's magic every time because they all turn out differently. I'm starting with a piece. Each of these measures four inches by five and a quarter. And that's done intentionally so that it will fit onto a, an A2 size card base, but I still have enough room to put a piece of cardstock around the edge as a frame. So each of these is the same size that I started with on these cards. And what you're going to want to do to start is find a die set that has some pieces that have open areas. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do some ink blending and you're going to be leaving a pattern. This is a really good place to look at an example. You're going to leave the, the negative, I guess, of the uh, die cut on the actual focal point on the, the card that we're gonna be making. And some good choices are in the artistically um, inked die bundle. And this is just a beautiful set. I believe it's called artistic dies. And these are big. You can see when you compare them to the size of my hand, this would be a great option. This would be a great option. And this is actually what I'm going to use. And what you want is open spaces in your dies so that you can actually leave a, a detailed pattern when you do your ink blending. And then what you're gonna wanna do, and I've done these ahead of time, I cut out quite a few of these, is make some stencils that we're going to put onto our pieces of paper. And what I'm going to do with these, and I've already prepped them, is I'm going to lay them onto these pieces of paper, and I'm going to ink blend over them. And then when I'm done with the ink blending, I'm going to take them off and I want to leave that outline. That means that I need to be able to get these off easily and not rip the paper when I take them off. And one really good way to do that, this is an old product and I apologize that it's old, is to use a two-way glue pen. These are available from different companies, big box stores. And what they do is they, they give you two ways to use the glue. And this one, like the others, is a brush. And if you put that glue on, 
it's a liquid and you put the piece down immediately, it's going to add like an adhesive. But if you put the glue on and then let it air dry, like I've let these air dry, I put glue on these, it becomes tacky and you can use these like post-it notes or like um, washi tape in a way that I'll be able to put these onto the surface, do what I want to do with them, and then I can pull them off. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting them down, doing my ink blending, and then I'll be taking them off. I have cheated. We won't call it cheating. We'll call, I have prepped two pieces that are exactly the same as the ones that I just showed you. And I've put the pieces on in a way that I think I'm going to like how the ink blending is going to work. And one thing that I just want to mention is when you put your stencil pieces down, keep in mind a place where eventually you will die cut for your sentiment. And let me explain what I'm talking about. So if I bring this example back in, when I eventually stamp my sentiment and then I use a die cut, the, the way that this card works, it's um, in French, it's um, a trompe l'oeil, which means it's a trick of the eye. And what it does is it tricks your eye that the design in the foreground and the design in the background are continual. So I purposely want to make sure that where I'm going to put that sentiment, I have some nice effects of the stenciling that I'm doing. So I can really make sure that it looks like this leaf is continuing and that leaf is continuing and it really gives a cool effect. One way you can do that is if you know what you're going to use as your die cut for your sentiment, you can sort of play around with that and make sure that there's going to be a nice area for you to use. And you don't have to do it at the same place on you know, two cards if you're doing two at once, but just make sure that there's some really nice patterns that you're going to capture when you cut out your sentiment. And I just give you that as a caution when you're putting your stencils down. And I'm just, I'm gonna start. The best way to do this is to just start in on it. I've chosen three colors that I thought were really pretty for autumn. I've got pale papaya, pumpkin pie, and mango melody. And I'm gonna start with the mango melody first. I have a dedicated ink blending brush for each one. You don't need to do that. You can have a brush that you can use on multiple colors. It will not be an issue at all. The only thing you need to do is make sure that in between, you're getting as much ink as you can off of your brush so you don't contaminate the next color that you go into. I do suggest that you have a piece of construction paper or some kind of paper behind what you're doing because it's very likely that you're going to need to do some um, ink blending outside of your card. I've used a lot of blending brushes and these are the ones from Stampin' Up. They come in a package of three. They are incredibly dense and they work very, very well. They also clean up really well with soap and water. And I find that they dry faster than some of the other brushes that I have tried. So it might be something that you want to give a shot. I'm just gonna rub the brush in here. And what I typically do, I'm gonna move these kind of out of the way a little, is I'm just gonna rub a little bit of the ink off and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start coloring my leaves. And this is where this process for me, and I hope it's the same for you, is relaxing. You should not be stressing out when you're doing coloring like this. It's a, to me, a very fun process. And a card like the one that we're going to be making, 
it's not a long process because these brushes are going to bring a lot of color into your paper. And what I'm doing here is kind of two things at once. I'm putting a really cool background on the actual card base. And I'm also coloring the leaves. And if I want to use those leaves in my card later, I will have them all set. And that's what I did in this card. I used the leaves that I colored when I made the background to actually decorate the card as well. I'm going to do these both at the same time because there's one thing that I'm going to change up on one of the cards. So I just want to have them kind of ready when we get to that point. And obviously one of the things that's going on with the piece that I'm doing on the right is that I am using some designer series paper as my background. And on the one that I started with, I used just plain cardstock. And it really is a very fun difference when you look at the two. And we'll see those as we continue to go through. Depending upon what designer series paper you use in your background, you may or may not need to use a little bit more ink when you're blending. And I'm using more on the one that I'm doing on the right. You'll see that in just a minute because I know that I've got a color that I'm working with in the background. So you can see that I purposely made that a little bit heavier. I will come back and use more of the Mango Melody, maybe. That's a great way to say, don't know if I'm going to or not yet. It's gonna depend on what this actually turns out to look like. The next color I'm going to use is a pale papaya. And it's important when you're choosing your colors and I'm getting a fresh brush, but again, that's me. If you don't want to use another brush, you don't need to. I could take the one that I used with the Mango Melody and literally just continue to swirl that ink out. And once that ink is gone, even though it's showing on the bristles, it really will not come up. And I could put it into that second ink pad if I wanted to. But I know that I'm going to go back to that color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a dedicated brush for the pale papaya. This is gonna be lighter. And that means that when I do this, I'm going to probably need to saturate the ink a little bit more on the brush. And I'm just gonna pull that in. I am going to intentionally go over some of the area where I use the Mango Melody. And it's important when you do this that whatever colors you're using to blend together, that they don't make a muddy, muddy mess when they are actually combined. So you want to think about the colors that you're using you know, um, a good thing that I use sometimes is a color wheel, or I will put my colors down in the order that we all know from science, you know, Roy G. Biv, and I'll make sure that at least they're not going to look really, really bad against each other. I have created some very ugly results by using some colors that just frankly, don't work together too well. All right, so we've got our wood one, and now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do this white one also. And you'll see that as I'm putting the ink on the white paper, that I could, if I wanted to, use a little bit of a lighter hand, but I'm gonna give this one a good push as well and just get some nice color and start blending it. I don't really care at this point if the colors, meaning the mango melody and the pale papaya are blending together well. That's really not the point in this because at the end, 
it's more the background that I'm creating. One thing I'm also doing is since the stencils or the die cuts have holes in them and I want to make sure that I'm getting ink into the middle of those holes, I am switching the direction that I am moving my brush. I'll go clockwise, I'll go counterclockwise, and that really helps the bristles to get into those holes and do what I want them to do. All right, so that's color number two. Now I'm gonna move to color number three. And for this one, I will use a pumpkin pie. This is definitely a very, very vibrant, deep orange. It is really, really pretty. And it is going to add kind of the most color without a lot of ink. And I'm gonna turn these around. You're also going to notice that I have some stencils that are hanging off the edge. Two reasons. I wanted to make sure that the imagery that I'm going to have has the kind of the end, that stem, and that I have part of a leaf here. I'm also going to make sure that I color the pieces that are hanging over because I may want to use them on my card. So I'm not going to ignore them, but obviously adding color to those isn't really going to do a heck of a lot in terms of adding anything to my card. I, you can see here maybe that I did get my finger in a little bit of the ink, and I just want to make sure that I'm not going to ruin my design. You're also going to notice as I've been doing this that occasionally part of that stencil is going to pop up a little bit. Two reasons. One could be that when I'm pressing down and doing the ink blending and moving those bristles back and forth, I could be aggravating that stencil. The other thing is that when I put the two-way glue onto that part, I may not have been able to get or may not have put enough glue into that piece of the die to actually keep it um, down on the paper. But I'm really not going to worry about it because by the time this is done, there are going to be so many parts that are going on on this that you won't even notice. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the wooden one. So I'm trying to do two at once. And you may be doing two, you might be doing one, whatever makes you happy. Just coming in and, and doing this. You'll find on this, I hope, that you're going to have so many color combinations. And think about the different dyes that you have. Flowers. You can do letters. You could put somebody's name in the background and have it stenciled in. That would really look kind of cool. I'm not worried that I put a lot of orange there because, again, when I get done with this, it's not going to matter. It really, really won't matter at all. Just coming back in, adding a little more color, continuing to move some of these pieces that I didn't do a great job on when I was doing my um, two-way glue. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a couple of, of minutes and sort of look at some areas where maybe I wanna add a little more color. And on this one, and I'm just gonna choose a color. It really, at this point, doesn't matter so much. So maybe I wanna add a little color to the areas where there are some white spaces. And I'm gonna choose, I don't know why, random choice. I'm gonna choose the middle color. That was the pale papaya. And I've got some on my brush and I'm just gonna come into the corner and give a little bit of color. Not a whole heck of a lot, just just a little bit to get it blended out. I'm not going to put color on this entire piece because I think it looks kind of cool when it has a little bit of white showing. If you don't like it with white on it, you do what makes you happy. And 
you can figure out what it is that, that you would like on that. On this one, because I've got the darker wood in the background, I'm going to use a different color to add just a little bit more so it doesn't look like that color stopped when I was ink blending. And for that one, I'm going to try a little bit of the yellow. This is the Mango Melody. Let's put that a little bit on the edge where the orange is, just to get a different tone going on, and a little bit down here as well. And then what I'm going to do, and I'm doing this intentionally, is on both of these, because I know that my sentiment for these two that I'm making, the sentiment is probably going to be down in this area because there's a lot of design or maybe right in there. So maybe right in there is where I'm going to put my sentiment. I want to make sure that the negative of these leaves is really pronounced in that area where I'm going to have my sentiment. So I'm going to use my darkest color one more time. And in my case, it's the pumpkin pie. And I'm intentionally going to go into that space, into that place where I think I'm going to do my sentiment. And I'm just going to give that a really deep, rich color. I want to see the negative of those leaves, especially in that area when I lift up these leaves. And I put a lot of different colors in the background and that's fine, but this is just gonna bring that out just a little bit more. So I'm just adding some really rich orange to that area. And I'm going to do it on this card as well. You'll see it more on the white background than on the wood that I just did. And I'm going to purposely get some of that off, scribble it off, and come in here and just make sure that this is going to be a little bit darker. And you'll find where you are comfortable with these colors and, and what makes you happy because it's going to be different for each of us. So you can see that I've got a little bit darker going on in the middle. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to see what these look like. And then I'm going to go on from there. And it was really interesting. I made this card yesterday. And I got to a point in this design and I thought, I hate this. I hate it, I hate it. I am going to throw it out and there's no way to salvage it. And I left it alone. I put it in timeout. And sometimes when I put things in timeout and I come back and I look at them and I think, ah, oh, darn it, I'm gonna try something else. I tried something and I'm gonna show you what I tried and it created this grunge effect. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one. But let's just take this off. This is like the grand reveal. It's so much fun. So you're going to go to one side. I'm actually going to go to the top and I'm just going to pull those off. Super cool. I can put my pieces to the side. I'm going to pull this one off. Again, super cool. And what I can see is when I cut out that middle part, wherever I decide to do it, Yep, I've got some really nice places where that white is showing through. So that's going to be really cool on the final card. Then let's check this out. What does this one look like? Hopefully we got enough ink so that, oh yeah, this is going to work. We've got some really fun negatives going on in the background. And then I'm going to pull this one up, maybe. Let's see what's going on down here. That looks, that looks good. So we can see that in both cases, there's an area where you can go ahead and put your sentiment. So sentiments. When you do something like this, you need to think about 
the color that you're going to use for your sentiment. I used early espresso on this, and I will be using early espresso on both of these. I'm going to add some more layers of ink, and I need to make sure that the colors that I use when I'm adding to the design don't directly compete with the early espresso. You need to have a dark color that is going to be able to be seen easily, like over here. I was really careful, this is um, cherry cobbler. I was really careful not to use cherry cobbler in the background, but I used it as the frame and on some of the leaves and made sure that that cherry cobbler is the darkest color that's in the design. Here, the early espresso is the darkest color. So before I put that dark early espresso sentiment on here, I'm gonna play just a little bit with some additional layers of color. And a couple of stamps that I'm going to use are on my clear blocks. Um, one of, or two of them actually, come from the artistically inked set. And one of them is this really long kind of funky stamp that looks like alcohol mixing with ink. That's the intention of it. But I actually am gonna use it more as a grunge stamp. I'm also going to use these little dots as grunge. And then I'm cheating because I'm going to use one stamp from a set that I will be using in the future as well. The Gorgeous Leaves, I'm gonna use this grungy stamp. And I've already said this, but many of you guys who know me well know that I love grunge. And Gorgeous Grunge was one of my absolutely favorite stamps until it was um, stopped a little while ago. But I love, love, love that one. So I'm going to work on the one on the right just for a minute. I have grabbed crumb cake, which is a really pretty brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up this stamp from the artistically inked set. And when I do big stamps like this, I like to lay the stamp down and then I'm going to bring the ink to the stamp. I don't do it the other way around because when I do it the other way around, I never get the ink evenly distributed. Even though this is a lighter brown, I don't want the full intensity on this card. So I'm gonna stamp it off once. And this is experimentation. I have not done this on this background yet. And I'm just adding some grunge. It's a little hard to see but it's going to add a really cool, it's almost like um, when you look at the papers that are intentionally made to look a little bit old, they have a really fun technique that they, they use. And I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna use a couple generations of that ink and it almost looks like a, a coffee stain. So I'm gonna come back in and do that a couple more times. Every time I am stamping off, I just don't want that full impact on this card. And just giving it some, just some fun, fun dimension. And what is interesting when I've done these is as you put layers on the front, the design of what you've got going on in the back actually pops through as well. So that wood that's in the background is starting to come out a little bit more and it looks really, really fun. And then you can use second, third, whatever generation of the ink I'm on right now. I'm gonna stop. I'm not going to overdo this because I don't want to get too much in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the stamp from, this is the Gorgeous Leaves. And this is one of the grunge stamps. There are two. And then a really cool stamp that looks like wood. 
So I'm going to grab that one and I'm going to bring back in one of the colors that I used to do the ink blending because I want to pull that out a little bit more and I'm going to bring back in the orange. But when I do this, I'm going to make sure that just like I did with the crumb cake, I'm not going to use the first generation of the color. So I'm going to take that stamp, bring it in, definitely stamping off, and then just kind of going in and seeing what's going on. And I can tell that I stamped off a little too much. So I'm going to stamp off once and go in. And when you do something like this, if you stamp only partially onto your image, make sure that you go back in and re-ink the entire stamp because otherwise you may have a line of ink that will show when you, when you stamp because you will have taken some of the stamp off the first time. So what I mean is if I stamped like this and I only got half of the image onto my piece of paper, then there would still be ink left on this side of the stamp. So if I then took it and I put the entire stamp down, I would have a line because I wouldn't have equal amounts of ink on the same, same thing. The last thing I'm gonna do on this, because I'm making this one a grunge one, which I like, and then we're gonna talk about the other one because that one's kind of quick. I'm just gonna add a couple of little, little dots and I'm using cherry cobbler. And again, I am going to stamp off. This is becoming a disaster over here, but that's okay. And there's no thought in this. It is random as heck because it is not meant to be anything that looks like a pattern. If it looks like a pattern, then in my opinion, it's really not grunge-ish. It is more intentional and I don't want it to look intentional. And I also am not going to do much more than that because I don't want to overdo. So that's where I'm going to leave that one. Now, the other piece that I've done, I'm gonna bring that one back in, just get a couple of things out of the way here. And I'm going to flip this over different. No, I don't like that color. We'll continue on the blue, the pink and the orange, not working for me. So I'm going to bring these pieces back in and we're going to now work on both of these. Very different, right? And this is really pretty much the difference between this card, which is grunge-ish, and that's how I got the grunge, and this card, which is much less grungy, and I didn't put the dots on here. I can go back and do that in just a second, or I might leave it until the, the card is on um, a little bit more. But let me show you the next thing to do. And that is to stamp your sentiment. And because I'm doing two at once, I'm gonna put the sentiment in the same place on these cards. And I'm just going to grab my Stamparatus, and I've already got the happy birthday set up in here. And you can see that I have it on different places. Um, I played around with the placement for the other two cards that I did. And you can also tell that I tend to use the same paper again and again. And let's just do a quick kind of where does it look good? And that's not too bad. Not exactly in the center, but I really don't care right now. That's kind of cool. So we'll, we'll put that down. And then I'm going to get my early espresso ink because again, I want to use a darker ink than anything that I've used on the background. So the sentiment is going to really stand out. I'm going to go ahead and 
do that. Just stamp my happy birthday in this case. And I'm going to stamp this a few times. I want to make sure that that ink is really clean and that the sentiment is able to be read without any problem. And sometimes that just takes a couple of times on the Stamparatus. And oh my word, I don't think I could stamp without the Stamparatus. It is just something that I use an awful, awful lot. And while we've got this one set up, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this piece in and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Since I have it all ready to go, I'll just go ahead and do my happy birthday. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that a couple more times just to make sure that I can read this sentiment. What's kind of nice, I think too, about this particular technique is these kinds of cards can be masculine, feminine, whatever you want. For those of us who have a really tough time coming up with designs that are good for men, this is one that will work. Okay, that's really all the stamping that I'm going to do in the Stamparatus. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out that sentiment. And one thing, I don't know if you've noticed this, if you've used the early espresso ink a lot, but it is one that can be a little juicy for lack of a better word. And what I find sometimes is when I put a dark color like this into my die cut, my die cutting machine, which is what I'm going to do. If there's a lot of pressure on the places where the sentiment is or something else that I've stamped, sometimes that ink is going to come off onto um, washi tape or I'm gonna use post-it notes. So I just like to give it a couple of seconds to dry. And what I also do sometimes if it's a really dark ink is I flip the piece over and I just give it a little bit of a push just to make sure that it's set. And that may be overkill because these look like they have dried fine and I think they're good to go. All right, I'm gonna cut this one first. And the reason is I'm gonna do this a little differently than I did the original example because I want to show you one more way that you can make this pop and make the sentiment pop even more. So I've got my big shot plate and my base and all of that and what I'm going to do here is just try to get that as centered and straight as I can. If it's not perfect, let it go. You'll be fine. People are gonna love the card anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And what's nice with sentiments like this, where you've got like the H on the left, you've got a really good shot of getting it straight, at least so that the sentiment looks like it's been cut straight. And I'm just gonna go off camera for two seconds here. And I'm going to cut out that sentiment and just make sure that I have my piece with the sentiment. All right, so get that cut out. Let's see how that did. And before I take that apart, I'm just gonna look on the back and make sure that everything was cut and it does look like it was. I find that using post-it notes rather than using washi tape for me means less tearing of the paper. I don't know if you guys find that or not, but for some reason, I am finding lately that 
washi and I are not getting along. I don't know why. So now I have my two pieces. And what I'm gonna do on this card that I haven't done on any others, and again, this is experimentation because I have no idea exactly how this is gonna look, but we're gonna give it a shot. What I'm going to do is I'm purposely gonna take this sentiment and I'm gonna put it to the side. And I want to add just a little bit more in the background because I think that is going to make this pop even more. And what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use this little grungy stamp. I'm going to make sure I don't have any ink on here. Just take it off and try to get as much ink off as I can. And I'm going to bring back in that mango melody. And this is experimentation. This is the fun of this. And I've had a lot of fun working on these because I had no idea really what it was going to look like when I was done. So I'm going to come back in with this. I'm going to stamp off a couple times just to see what is this going to do? Well, this is going to be fun, I think. And I'm just going to come in and add a little grunge. I love this stamp already. It is way too much fun. It just adds some, some interest. And I may be about done. I'm a little bit in there. OK, we're going to say we're done before we do too much. And now what that's going to do is that background is going to pull that foreground out a little bit more. And do I want to do any more on this? Oh, probably not. I will leave it as it is, because if I don't, I will be sorry. OK, so let's talk about how you can put these cards together. I'm going to show you one and then we're going to talk through the others. I apologize that there is a mess in the background, but what I did on these cards, I just have a regular old A2 card base and it is vertical. You can do these horizontally as well, whatever makes you happy. And then I'm using a piece of early espresso. I just want to pull the color of my sentiment into the background. And I cut this to five and three eighths. So it's an eighth of an inch less than the height of the A2 card. So it's five and an eighth, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. And it's just gonna give a nice little border around the card. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got this the right way up. Before you glue your second piece down, make sure that you've got your piece the right way up. I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere that right on the front. And you can layer these if you want. You know, you could put dimensionals on here, but we're gonna use dimensionals on the top and that's gonna give it a pop. I'm just gonna take this and it is going to go right in the center of this piece. So we've got a couple little frame pieces going on. Just finishes it off really well. And then for the sentiment, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a little bit of a border around the piece that I die cut. This is one of the dies from the stitched rectangle die collection. And it fits really well inside a piece of cardstock. The cardstock is one inch by three inches. And this is the die that is going to give you um, it's seven eighths of an inch wide and two and seven eighths of an inch long. 
So you're just gonna have to do a little bit of measuring or what you can do as well is you can always use a concentric die that is a little bit bigger and you can die cut a base of cardstock that's using your die cut rather than cutting it with scissors like I did. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put my sentiment right on the top of that piece that I cut out. That's the early espresso. And then I'm gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of this piece. And pop it up. And what's really nice when you pop it up is it's gonna give a really neat effect and it, it's one of those that people will pause and kind of think about how in the world did she make sure that the design that's on the piece that's popped up with a sentiment, how was that aligned with the piece that's on the bottom? And it, it will take a second for people to, to understand or it could just stump them completely. And when you put this piece on, I suggest that you look at it straight on. So I'm gonna stand up and I'm going to attach it. And my goal when I attach it is to look at the negative of the stenciling that we did and try to make sure that it lines up. So I'm going to come in right from the top. And for example, I'm gonna make sure that that little white line connects top and bottom when I put that on. So it looks like the leaves are on the top and on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna set that down. So you've got this fun little pop that you got going on. Now, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to show you the end result, but I have pieces that I created when I did this card, when I did the stenciling, I've got all these gorgeous leaves that I can use to decorate this card. And I can put them in different places. I can tuck them up underneath. I can do some cutting. I did an awful lot of cutting to make this card. So for example, if you've got a very long group of leaves like this, maybe I just want to use these two. I can just cut it off right in here. And then I have two leaves that I can use. I can cut this leaf off and I'll have a single leaf. I have some just infinite ways that I can use these. You can also, go back and make some more die cuts and have a plain white, for example, that would look really cool if you wanted to bring out the white color, for example, on, these, on this background. The one thing that I do recommend is as you're thinking about where you would put additional designs, try not to visually block where the pattern on the front and on the back meet. So for example, I would not put, imagine that this is underneath, I would not put these two leaves directly on the top of that area because then I can't see that that leaf is a continual view. I might stick something down in here. So I might take a, a single leaf, for example, and maybe put it in something like that. And I can still see that these two leaves are continual. So the, the way that you can decorate these is just infinite. And you can also use some um, other elements. This came from the ephemeral package and that was with the artistically inked. And I just pulled out some of the gold and used that. And then if you don't really want to pull in too much, especially maybe on one that you put together that looks kind of grungy. I think the grunge sort of stands on its own. You know, I don't need 
I don't know that I really need anything else. And maybe, maybe you would like to add a couple of little pieces and you certainly can do that. But you can also let the background itself just stand on its own. And on this one, all I did was add a couple of the genial gems, which come in some really, really pretty colors and works really well with the background. On this one, on the example that I had, I did use a different color card base and I used that intentionally to really draw out the oranges and a lot of different, different things that you can do with this. So look at your dies. You are going to find, I think, a lot that have these open areas that you can use to make stencils like this. And the occasions, the possibilities are endless. The color combinations are endless. And they're really a lot of fun. And I find them very relaxing to do. And remember, you can do them on a background that has designer series paper like these two, or you can use plain cardstock like the one on the left and the one that I started here on the right. So I hope you enjoy this. It's, it's a really cool technique and a lot of different ways that you can use it. And I look forward to seeing what you make.